Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about Russian tortoises. It's been a while since we talked about tortellini and how they make great pets. So let's go through the five reasons why I think they do and you guys can see if Russian tortoise is right for you. So let's get started with number five. So reasonable requirements, a lot of tortoises require vast amount of space, not reasonable for a large portion of the United States. You would need a large, probably outdoor zone. If you do it indoors, it would be a very expensive. You would have to convert a very big room and such. And temperature requirements aren't there for a large portion of the United States. You would have to be probably in Texas, Florida, maybe Arizona. So it's not reasonable for a lot of people in the U.S. to do a tortoise, to get a tortoise as a pet have them outdoors or get that large enough space. Russian tortoises though, they are doable. I mean, there's Herman's tortoises and other tortoises that are around the same size that are also doable, but Russian tortoises are definitely probably the most popular of the group. It makes sense to me that if you want a tortoise, a Russian tortoise is probably the way to go. They're probably the most accessible out of the smaller tortoises as well. They're great first tortoises also. I wouldn't jump to a sulcata or something right away anyway. So I definitely think because of their reasonable requirements, Russian tortoises make a great tortoise to get. Let's move on to number four. Tortellini is probably one of the cheapest and most easiest to maintain reptiles I have. He's very easy and very fun to take care of. I would say, for one, the most expensive part of housing a Russian tortoise is, even though they do not need the same requirements as, let's say, a cherry head or a red foot or a sulcata or any of those big guys, they still need a good amount of space. A lot of Russian tortoises are not kept in the greatest of conditions. Even my enclosure, which is about five and a half by three feet that is a little too small for him to be honest so if you're trying to house a Russian tortoise right you're probably gonna have to get a bigger enclosure for them now you can really get one of those Rubbermaid troughs or I don't know the circle kind I think I'm gonna get the 300 gallon one or there's one around 300 gallons that should be great for a Russian tortoise and it's actually not that expensive compared to what you would spend enclosure wise on a lot of other reptiles otherwise enrichment is pretty inexpensive I mean given different levels of terrain they love that's a great way to give enrichment that doesn't cost that's just in the substrate there's a lot of easy and cheap ways to make hides that you can use for a tortoise of that size and other than that all you need is really like a water bowl they are grazers so you really don't want to get a food bowl for them at least i don't i actually to help with the different levels in terrain put some kind of rock bricks i don't know what they're called but i put them in there and i kind of place most of the food pile on those just so they're a little out of the substrate but they're still like they're grazing their day-to-day -day maintenance is very very low i mean i feed tortellini a nice size pile of greens every other day about the same size of him maybe a little bit more and then just water exchanges i guess cleaning the water bowl out from time to time is the most maintenance i have to give for tortellini obviously they need uvb and basking bulbs so you got to keep an eye on them and exchange them when they're due or they die so that's in there but that's really not that frequent and as russian tortoises are priced they're really not that expensive again compared to other reptiles out there so they all together are just very reasonable and you're not going to be breaking the bank really in any regards if you're getting a russian tortoise before continuing on to number three if you're already convinced russian tortoises make great pets make sure to check that lower right hand corner hit that subscribe button hit that bell as well for the latest updates i will would really appreciate it. All right, number three, guys. Depending on what you want out of your reptile, number three might not be a reason for you to get a Russian tortoise, but for those people out there who do not like feeding inverts, which a lot of reptiles eat or do not want to feed meats and anything like that, Russian tortoises are primarily green eaters. They primarily eat their salads. Now, what do I mean by primarily salads? Well, you can't add in some fun food items from time to time as a treat. I add in squash from time to time with him. That's mostly what I add. Some people will add in some things like strawberries and stuff. I would not. One of the biggest problems with tortoises is overfeeding the sugars, and that can cause a lot of issues. But you can feed things like squash and a little bit lower sugar items as a treat from time to time, and it is so fun to watch them go at it because they get so excited over that stuff but yeah primarily you want to focus on your greens i mostly feed a mix of collard greens kale endives tortoise diet that's not a green but they love tortoise diet and then some spring mix from time to time which is just 
throw together some different lettuces, sometimes spinach and stuff like that. So that's primarily what I feed them. And like I mentioned previously, you want to give about the same size as your Russian tortoise in terms of the amount. I usually give just a little extra because I do every other day, but that's pretty reasonable for an older than one year old tortoise. But yeah, if you're like Olivia, my girlfriend, and hate inverts, and I always ask her when I go to way to feed some of my reptiles and she gets all freaked out and stuff like that. Russian tortoise is great for you. I think Russian tortoise is her favorite because that's all greens and very easy. So if you're not into your bugs, Russian tortoises are a great pet. Now on to number two, guys. First they're sour, then they're sweet. I know, I totally just stole that. The most enjoyable part of Tortellini is his personality. It is hilarious whenever I go in his enclosure, just try to do some maintenance, he comes storming out of that hide, runs up to me like he's trying to bully me out of his zone. Sometimes they do little huffs and it's very funny like he's trying to be intimidating, but he's just cute little tortellini. He's this cute little Russian tortoise. And then once he comes up to you, he stops and he just kind of checks you out. And then he goes about his business. He's just kind of like, hey, I'm here. What's up? This is my zone. Just want to let you know I you probably stumbled in here by accident. It's just really funny. He's, he's very upfront and in your face. He has quite a personality. From what I gathered though, a lot of tortoises are like that. They are very into people that get into their territory. Obviously, for the most part he recognizes me that I give him food and such so I don't think it's total intimidation but it kind of comes off as that I, I can't really read into it because you know I'd study him and everything like that but it's funny nonetheless that's the point so if you love your personality and reptiles Russian tortoises will definitely get you there they are very personable they love checking you out they're very good eaters I love watching them eat it's very funny so it's very wholesome too very wholesome they're just very it's just watching like the magic of nature you know what I mean but yeah Russian tortoises with their personality can't go wrong finally guys number one let's get to it We had a conversation previously about how tortoises require a good amount of space, even the smaller ones like tortellini, and that's because they are incredibly active. Not only are they grazers and roaming around looking for food, but they like to be active. They like to roam. They roam usually, Russian tortoises specifically, to find water out in nature in their natural environment. So they do use a lot of space and they're very active and fun to watch, especially if you designed the enclosure in an interesting way. So if one of the reasons you love reptiles is going by the enclosure, checking out what they're doing and watching them from time to time. A Russian tortoise will definitely give you a little bit of adventure. It's also very funny when they burrow because you just kind of look around and usually the substrate blends in with the color of their shell and it's really hard to find them. It's like hide and go seek or something like that. So they're very entertaining. They are actually quite fast for a tortoise, I feel like. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but they, they will definitely give you a show. So I definitely think a Russian tortoise will be a very entertaining reptile to own. As I mentioned in the personality bit, they can be somewhat sassy from time to time and that makes for good entertainment. They do try to get into areas they can't and you would think that would be a little weird or hard to do as a tortoise. Well, trust me, get a Russian tortoise, put together a good environment for them and you'll see them get into things they probably shouldn't be. So let's recap for you guys number five reasonable requirements. Russian tortoises are very reasonable to keep and can be kept indoors unlike redfoots and sulcatas who require a large outdoor space usually unless you can really really convert a room and require good temperatures in that outdoor space. So you could definitely house a Russian tortoise indoors in a proper environment and it'd be no problem. Number four, low cost, low maintenance. They don't require that much in the beginning. They don't require that much throughout their life. They are very low cost and they don't require a ton of work day to day. So it's mostly enjoyment and you don't got to worry about doing a thousand things to keep them up. Number three, salads only. If you guys aren't into feeding inverts and such like that, they only eat their greens and there are some fun treats you can give them. They're very enthusiastic eaters as well, so they'll probably never miss a meal and make you worry. Number two, sassy and sweet. Their personality is very funny. They can get sassy. They can get sweet and docile. It's just very entertaining to be around them, and they're very personable. Finally, number one, activity. They will give you a show when you're watching them. They're burrowing. They're running around. They're getting into trouble. It's all fun and games with them, so it's very fun to watch them and pass by the enclosure and see what's going on. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below make sure to leave a like as well and let's get to a couple announcements before wrapping up for one shout out to you amazing patrons mahans bioactive reptiles brian b angela l herb m and david t i really appreciate your support 
you guys too can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Check the top right for more information. Support the channel in a different way. Today I'm wearing my Professor Herp logo, but I also have three different designs as to the left of my head. Right of your screen, in the description below, you'll find a Teespring link. That's where you can check them out. I'd really appreciate the support, guys. One final announcement today. I'm going to be moving my Friday postings to Monday. I think that'll be a better day overall for me and you guys because there's a lot of posts on Friday and people get busy on Friday. So check out the next post on Monday and then I'll be Monday, Wednesday, every week I'll be posting. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Again, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next time.